Oh no. Someone screwed me on the top bolt. It's got to come back out. We're back and today we're working on the 2001 E46 330i automatic. We're getting this thing ready to sell. I got an oil filter housing gasket and a Vano soil line. We're also going to be getting in there, pulling the belts off, checking any pulleys, seeing if any of those need addressing, and then doing a couple little fine tuning items, just getting this thing nice and cherry and ready to sell. So let's get into it. Got her up on ramp, so we should have plenty enough room on the bottom. Let's get this fan shroud out of here. Hit it clockwise. Another note on this 330i, I actually replaced this fan, this uh, cooling fan. It was missing one of these blades. And so I got a replacement at the parts store and it ended up rectifying the vibration issue I had at, at uh, like 2000 RPM. So with the fan out of there, let's uh, get these belts pulled off and double check all these pulleys. Let's take this AC belt off. It should be nice and fresh. I replaced it. All right, we got both belts off. This belt's looking nice and good too. Let's give them a spin. That one's a little noisy. This idler pulley is making a good bit of noise, so I think I'm going to look for a replacement for this today because I've heard a little bit of noise from the belt assembly and I want to make sure that the buyer of this car has zero belt noise. The tensioner pulley seems good, sounds good, sounds healthy. AC tensioner pulley is uh, really good too. thinking we'll take the alternator out next but before we do that I want to disconnect the power to the alternator so if we just DC this uh, connection right here and get this cable off we're now DCing the alternator wire now we can pull the idler pulley hey good morning Brandon just calling for pricing and availability on? I got a 2001 BMW 330i and I'm looking for the idler pulley Forty-five ninety-nine. Okay, cool. I'll head down a little bit. Thank you very much. Right on, man. Sounds good. Thanks. Well, forty-five bucks. Hopefully, one of you guys buys it, and you'll appreciate me replacing it while I'm in here. So. Let's get this oil filter out of here and get that housing draining down. It looks decent, doesn't look too bad. Now we can get this power steering pump out of here, so look at that. Someone over torqued that power steering nut, that power steering bolt, and just stripped the hell out of it. So we'll have to fix that too. Someone not very qualified's been in here. Our steering pump is dropped away. Disconnect. Now we can start breaking all our hardware loose for the oil filter housing. And before we get too far, let's break our bolt loose for our Vanos oil line. And don't forget to save your washers so you can match them up and replace them. One little pulled thread on this one. Someone over torqued it. We should be free to get this thing out of here now. Just need to be mindful of our, uh... oh, I just made a mess, didn't I? Yes, I did. I just dumped oil all over my floor. Should have had a pan down. So as you can see, this oil filter housing has been leaking for some time. Now I made the mess a whole lot worse once I broke the seal, but when I was doing the engine mounts, I could see this thing dripping down onto the front subframe. So I'm glad we're getting it done. It's definitely, uh, definitely due. Down with some spray nine while we keep moving, just to help break up some of this grease and grime. I think we're gonna give this thing a little spit shine when we're done, so. Still got some remnants of some snow from the last couple days. It was pretty cool. The whole house was covered. And uh, 
Yeah, we're on the coast here. We're at like 20 feet sea level. All right, we're just gonna clean this turd up a little bit, hit her with a rag, get her dried off, and uh, rub down any big grease spots that we can find. This gasket looks flat. It is flush with the housing, let me tell you. Hey, it's pretty soft though. Someone had done it. They just uh, didn't torque it to spec or take the take enough time cleaning up the surface. But based off uh, how stretchy this is, still it doesn't seem that old. It's definitely not original. I can tell you that. So before we get too far on cleaning this filter housing, this is where the uh, back screw for the power steering pump mounts to the oil filter housing, then the two other front bolts up here. Someone over torqued that steel bolt and they just pulled all this aluminum out. And so this thing is wiped clean. We could drill it and then we could tap it and then uh, make a over, get an oversized bolt for it. But I'm gonna go to the parts store and I'm gonna look for a Healy coil. So I busted out my tap and die set just to confirm the thread pitch on this bolt. And so this is a uh, eight mil by 1.25. Actually, instead of that, you know what I just realized is this uh, hole is blind, but it goes a whole lot deeper than uh, the threads that were pulled. So what I think we're going to do to solve this issue is we're just going to delete this bolt and we'll just replace it with a bit longer bolt. This one's a little bit too long, but if we run uh, this one with that much height, that is perfect. So we're not going to repair these threads, we're just going to run a longer piece of hardware. So I'm going to set this aside. We'll get the new gasket installed. Victor Rhine's gasket here. I like Victor Rhine's. So housing's cleaned up, new gasket's in. Let's get this old banjo bolt off. And let's work on getting this thing back in. Twenty two Newton meters for all you torque heads. Oh no. Someone screwed me, guys. That's not good. It's gotta come back out. Someone screwed me on the top bolt. Take it back out. Yep. There goes our threads. Whoever did this before over torqued it and straight screwed me. So. Should have bought that Healy coil after all. So we're gonna have to fix it. I'll make my day a little bit better. All right. I thought this was gonna be a speedier repair. So it is blind. I have that much depth on it. I almost just bought a Healy coil that would have matched this exact same size, but I didn't. So now I got to go back to the parts store and go buy it. Anyways, we're going to have to go in here and we're going to have to thread repair the block for the oil filter housing right here because uh, someone over torqued it. They put too much stress on all the threads. This is an aluminum block, so you have to be gentle. It's going to be one of those days. One of those days. Healy coil. Yay. It's a steel bolt onto an aluminum block, so you just really got to be careful. I know I don't always torque everything to spec. However, after so many years of working on these cars, I feel like I have a really good judge of torque. Um, oil filter housings, of course, is something that you should probably torque to spec. The person that did it before me didn't, so now we get to, now we get to fix their problem. Now, now it becomes my problem. But we're going to do it right. We're going to do it to the best of our ability. So we're going to have to pull this dowel out somehow without damaging it too much. So I'm gonna work on trying to get that dowel out and then we'll have to drill it, tap it, put a Healy coil in and uh, hope it holds.
we're gonna do is we'll get this uh, valve out of the way, disconnect this line. Okay, cool. The dowel is out. Now we can start working on the hole. Before I uh, get ready to Healy coil, you can see this tap. Healy coil M8 by 1.25. Use drill 2164. So now I need to find a 2164 drill to punch that hole through. My 2164 drill bit, I'm gonna need to protect the oil filter housing openings so no metal particulate falls down into there. And then we're gonna drill this out and continue. So we'll drill it, we'll tap the exterior, we'll insert the new Healy coil in, and then we'll try to reinstall. Now I squirted a little bit of brake cleaner on a rag. I'm just going to use that to try to dry up any oil that's on the mating surface. I really hate having to put a drill into the block. Now we can finish out drilling this hole. we drilled and got rid of all the previous threads that were in there. Okay, now that we drilled it out, we're going to be tapping it with the supplied tap in the Healy coil kit. So now we're making new threads for the Healy coil to bite onto. Make sure you're nice and straight. We're bottomed out. We can take our tap back out. Now we can clean this out again. So I have my Healy coil installed onto my driver, which I have attached to my square drive adapter. I'm going to take a small drop of Loctite for some extra reassurance. Let's try this again. Okay, it feels bottomed out. Okay, that's tight. Let's back it out. Let's hope it works, folks. Now let's get it cleaned up. Get that excess Loctite off. Now let's try to get this dowel fitted back in. That's looking better. Now we can pull the tape, get this housing back in.
Thousands looking pretty good so far. You know, this kind of stuff happens and you can let it ruin your day or you can uh, just improvise and adapt and overcome the issue. You know, I uh, wasn't planning on doing any thread repair today and especially threads in a block, you know, it's a pretty sketchy repair to have to do, but you know what? Sometimes you gotta do sketchy stuff. And sometimes you gotta learn and step out of your comfort zone and uh, you know, do things that intimidate you a little bit, but that's just part of life and that's, that's what it takes to learn and uh, get better at something. All right, let's try this again. Come on, Healy Coil. Oh. All right, guys, we did it. Crisis is averted. Okay, so it's time to replace this old Vanos oil line. This thing was heavily saturated when I took it out. It looks a little bit cleaner because it got hit with the pressure washer, but it's time to get this replaced. So um, we're going to be using this Euro brand replacement. And for this part, I love having this assorted ceiling washer kit. So I just open that box up and then I take my ceiling washer off and this is for the banjo bolt. And so we just go in and find a ceiling washer that matches the inside diameter just like that one. So boom, right there. Done. We just need four of them. One, two, three, four. Two for the bottom, two for the top. I'll put a link in the description for a ceiling washer assorted kit like this. Sneak it down in front of the water pipes, right down to about there. Same story, new washer. Beautiful, nice and tight. So reinstalling these alternators is always a pain because this has to slip over the oil filter housing and there's a slip bushing in here. You can see it protruding a little bit right there. So we're gonna use the uh, bench vise technique on this one today. We need a socket large enough to fit on the outside of this to give this room to push out of the alternator. So then what we're gonna do is just place this down in here like that. And so you can see now that slip bushing is flush. The nut pushed out on the back side. This is nice and flush on the inside now. So this alternator is just going to slide right onto the oil filter housing. Now this alternator just fall right in and boom. There's our bottom bolt. Get that started a couple turns. Picked up a new deflection pulley or idler pulley at O'Reilly today. And you know, I gotta give, is it a video if I didn't drop a bolt yet? I gotta give kudos to O'Reilly because they did price match this to uh, FCP Euros price online. So it was 45 and they lowered it to 34, which I thought was pretty cool. So now we can get this idler pulley back on too. And before I put that on, let's give it a spin test. Pretty noisy, silent. Put the dot on the alternator, drop that down. There we go. Bring our power steering bottle back over. Now I was just spinning the water pump pulley 
and I noticed that there's a little drop of coolant. So I mirrored it and it looks like there is a little bead of coolant right there on the bottom of the connector for the upper radiator hose. So let's put some pressure into the system real quick and uh, see if we can figure out where exactly that leak's coming from because we got to fix that. Put about 15 PSI into it. So I put some pressure into the system and uh, you guys see that drop on there? So that's coming out of the thermostat housing. And also there's a little bit of a drop right there collecting on the upper radiator hose. So we're going to need a thermostat housing and an upper radiator hose in order to get this thing nice and cherry again. So the thermostat was purchased from O'Reilly. That upper radiator hose was purchased from ECS. So they're going to be hearing from me today. I'm going to need to get some parts warrantied. Coolant leaks are unacceptable. Well, guys, when it rains, it pours. I put some pressure back in it to see what the uh, puddle on the floor was coming from because I didn't see that much coolant leaking out of the thermostat and upper hose, but looks like we need a radiator, too. This driver's side's leaking on the seam right below the expansion tank. So when it rains, it pours, I guess. Looks like we need to source a radiator for this car too. But whoever's getting it's going to get a dialed bulletproof V46 with like every problem addressed. So, you know, there's a lot of situations that are outside of our control, but the only thing that we do have control over is how we react to them. And I can't just let this thing leak. I can't sell it knowing that there's a radiator leak or that there's a slight leak on the upper hose or the thermostat. So, we're just going to start tearing into it. I'm getting the coolant pulled out of it right now. We're going to get the upper lower radiator hose off. I'm going to get the thermostat pulled out. I'm going to get the radiator pulled out. O'Reilly's got a Murray brand radiator in stock for 140 bucks. They also have an upper hose for 40 bucks. Then they're going to do a swap on that thermostat for me. So I could put it off and I could pout and I could worry about having to spend more money on the car, but it's not going to get it back on the road. So it's time to get back to work and let's get this radiator out of here. Get this cover off, pop this connector, close off. Should have enough coolant pulled out to where we won't make a mess. And hey, on the bright side, more problems for me means more content for you guys. So it's not all terrible, right? Let's get this other coolant hose DC'd off the tank. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with this expansion tank style. The way I like to get them out without breaking those uh, little automatic transmission thermostats is get the hoses disconnected off of it get that clip pulled out then I like to take a pry bar put the cap back on and then lift up underneath the cap and just try to keep it nice and straight And so we were able to save that transmission thermostat by not beating it up too much. Get that clip popped up. All right, now we can work on getting this lower radiator hose out of here. And pop that clip up. Same story for our upper connector. Just give it a little bop. All right, both hoses are out of the way. Now we gotta DC the transmission cooler, so just pop that clip up, get behind it, give it a little bump. Now there's a little torque screw over here by the upper radiator hose. Get that guy pulled out, should want to come right out.
There she is. Okay. Now we just pull the connector for the thermostat. Now Quarter turn and come on out. Boom, there you are. So it's leaking right there. As to why, I'm not sure. Let's hope the new thermostat is a little bit better. All right, I'm off to the parts store with my thermostat to get a new radiator, thermostat, and upper hose. See you in a minute. All right, y'all, we are back from the parts store. I got a new Murray radiator, a jug of coolant. We have a replacement upper radiator hose, a warranty thermostat. So now we just got to get to work and get this stuff put back in. I need to get the bracket swapped off of the old radiator and installed back onto the new one, and we'll keep trucking. Let's get this puppy installed. All right, now we need to get this lower piece off. It just kind of pops out of here. You just got to lift off down there. All right, now we got to lube everything up. We need to make sure that this drain plug is tight, which it is. You just got to kind of get them in at an angle, get this driver's side down first. Then you can work the passenger side down. That side's in, this side's gonna stay loose pretty much until we get the fan shroud in. There we go. So this needs to go back on the bottom of the expansion tank. It came off and attached to the thermostat. We're just gonna slide it back in. And that's the plastic piece that sandwiches the O-ring inside all of these BMW quick connect style hoses this down really good let's get this main serpentine belt back on real quick and then as always double check make sure your belt is sitting nice and flush you don't want it hanging off any ribs I've told you my horror stories of having belts hanging off by a rib and You'll end up shredding belt material and causing coolant leaks. Serpentine belt is on. AC belt is on. It's flush on all the pulleys, flush on the tensioner. Good to go. Now let's get working on these hoses again. That clip nice. Mmm. This hose ain't so great. It's a little long. I got to stop for today, guys, because this upper radiator hose is too long. It's all bunched up right here, and uh, it's causing the hose to bunch up and be bound right here, and that might even limit cooling ability. So. I'm going to call O'Reilly and see if they can get me another hose coming. I really wanted to get coolant back in this thing today, but it's not going to happen. Hey guys, welcome back. Day two on the job. Yesterday was an ass kicker, let me tell you. 
we're back at it today. Uh, luckily, I got a stash of O-rings, so we're going to get the O-ring replaced on the original Bavarian Autosport upper radiator hose that I got. And so we'll try to rectify that today, and we're just going to keep on pushing through. So I got the old O-ring picked out of the hose. It doesn't look that great. It's a little flat. but So we're just going to swap O-rings and then put this back together and see how it works. As always, get these O-rings lubed up. So put some coolant in this, pressure test it, see how it looks. This thing filled, take a flat head, open up our bleeder screw. Well, looks like we got a leak at the lower radiator hose too, so we're gonna be pulling that one apart and uh, rebuilding that hose as well. So I don't really have a good way to catch this coolant and reuse it, so I'm just gonna try to do this quick. I have an O-ring right here ready to swap. I'm gonna pop the hose off, try to swap the O-rings real quick without losing too much coolant. Could have been a lot messier, but it went pretty smooth, so. Come on, lower hose. Hold. 16 PSI in the system. So far, so good. I'll let that marinate and uh, start getting the rest of this car buttoned up. Get this fan and shroud back in. That's a nice fit. All right, guys, I'm gonna go catch some breakfast and finish this up after. Just tempt fate with pouring skills. Get this new filter in. Get this cap back on. The uh, charging cable back connected to the alternator. All right, guys, cold start. Time to fire her up and see how she runs. Fingers crossed. Running really good so far. Really good. Well, shoot, I just missed all the pressure washing, but she cleaned up real nice. I degreased the whole top with some gunk foamy degreaser. 
pressure washed her down, got the undercarriage cleaned up pretty good too. I'm going to drive her around today, although the DISA valve is making a bit of noise. I checked it with the stethoscope, it sounds like it's coming from the DISA. Luckily I got a rebuild kit on hand, so I'm going to drive it around for the day and then probably bring it back in and get that DISA rebuilt. I also got new cornering lights coming for it today and then uh, I got a new polisher on the way too so we'll be able to get the headlights done and uh, make some more progress on her. Well let's take her for a rip and see how she does huh? She is buttery smooth driving I'll tell you that as far as the body and chassis goes driving like a brand new car. Shout out to Andrew for hooking me up with the new sunroof cover he reached out to me in the comments and said he had a spare so we got that thing on the way which is pretty sweet. She's all warmed up let's give her the juice and uh, See how she accelerates? We'll start here in second. There's 90. Smooth as butter. Accelerates and pulls really good. AC's blowing ice cold. Trans feels real strong, shifts really clean. So this time I'm gonna give it the juice but just let the transmission do all the shifting and I'll show you how smooth she shifts. Go for a downshift here. Ninety five. Well, I got some of this oil filter pulled apart, and I'm happy with how that filter's looking. A little bit of old gasket material and stuff, but. Nothing major that would raise any alarms, so old filter looks really good. Well, I got a little bit more gas in the tank for today, so let's try to get this Disa taken care of real quick. Check out that pin. It's like all smashed up on the end. And this thing just has a bunch of play, so let's take it over to the bench, get my rebuild kit, see what we can do about that. That came off nice. Got it. Did not want to come out, but I got it. I went back and looked at my footage from the last time I did this and uh, I remember that <clears throat> I shaved this down and I also shaved the bell crank down so I'm just going to take a little bit of meat off this but most importantly I'm going to shave that bell crank down because there's too much resistance inside the DISA valve when I have it all put together without modifying it and you know Chinese DISA rebuild kits you get what you pay for so. All right, let's try to get this thing back in now, huh? Feels a little cross-threaded, so I'm gonna clean up these bolts. Six mil by 1.0, tap. again. All right, let's fire this thing up, see how she runs.
Right on, I think that diesel rebuild was successful. It quieted down a lot, so uh, engine's running a lot smoother now. It's a lot quieter. Well guys, I'm pretty tired. We got a lot of work done the last two days. We started with that oil filter housing reseal with the Vanos line. We ended up having those stripped threads inside the block. We repaired those threads, got the oil filter housing back on. We put on that new idler pulley. We pressure tested the cooling system. We found that thermostat was leaking. We replaced that with a warranty thermostat. Upper and lower radiator hose were leaking at the O-rings. We got those fixed and rectified. The radiator was leaking. We got that fixed and rectified. We did an oil service. We pressure washed the top and the bottom of the engine. And then we ended up rebuilding that diesel valve. So all in all, we did a lot of work. I'm real happy with the progress so far. I got cornering lights showing up today. I got my polisher for the paint showing up tomorrow. And the readiness monitors are all green. And so we're ready to smog it. So I'll have this thing smogged on Monday. I might put off the torque converter if I can because it's not present right now. And I'd like to just get it smogged so I get the good bill of health for my sale. Um, but other than that, it's in really good shape. I'm going to put those corner lights in it, give it a decent little detail, and um, polish the headlights, and that should be about it. So I'm going to get inside. i got some editing to do. I'm going to wind down for the evening. But I hope you enjoyed, or I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. And as always, I'll see you on my next day off, folks.